So that group's two or two hundred. Doesn't matter. You still require a certain number of people to function and to reinforce your actions so you stop feeling guilty about X and can move on to A and start over. You feel bad is a natural course of empathy and sympathy that indicates you are a human being, that indicates you are emotionally alive inside, and that indicates you're not a sociopath. Because you can feel that guilt and you can feel the empathy for the wrong of your actions and you're trying to make up for it, you are automatically a better person than you think. All right, everybody, you can be mad at me. I made you all feel guilty about stuff. <laughs> Wait for tomato or like, you know. I encourage questions, by the way, during the panel. If you have a question, raise your hand. I'll take it right then and there. Because part of science is analyzing why I'm wrong. We only get to the right answer by figuring out what's wrong with the current answer. So, yes. I've already got one question. Let the rage flow or deal with it. Does it have to be A or B? No, it can because be C. I was going to say, how could you deal with it if you never let loose, if you don't let go of what's pissing you off? I'm getting there. Okay. <laughs> it can be C. It can be repression, which is bad. <laughs> <laughs> what happens when you bottle up your anger? I mean, that looks like a really mad pony to me. <laughs> 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 so we went over this. Give her a cupcake. Start moving if you want What's to wrong with this? I'm going to pause it here. Are you okay? Why is she getting mad? She's being Trixie's just going over her day. She's explaining the process of order that has resulted in, well, the table being missing. But the point <laughs> is, <laughs> Trixie isn't doing anything wrong. Except she's not noticing the other party of the conversation. Yes and no. If you are mad at someone and you don't let it out, anything you, they do will piss you off. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Look at her eating saltine crackers. Like she <laughs> <laughs> She's not doing anything wrong. You're just mad. Also, literally the next line. <laughs> Are you yeah. okay? Yes. Yeah, right. Starlight ignores it. Why? She feels guilty about hurting Trixie's feelings. She's continuing her own cycle of repression by repressing her anger at Trixie over the current cluster crappium they're in? <laughs> I have some very inventive ways of not actually using curse words. I should apply that more. <laughs> Starlight? Because you seem a little... What's the word? Look <laughs> bad. <laughs> no, I am great. Did your sound bag just glow? No. Get it in home. Don't give it here. Don't. Don't. <laughs> the person you're mad at just went, hey, um, can we talk? You seem a little stressed. <laughs> and their, your response is, no, everything's fine. <laughs> liar, liar, pants on fire. <laughs> but, but she's not wearing pants. <laughs> you should know, liar. The point here being, if Starlight would just tell Trixie why she's mad and get it out, we wouldn't end up with three ponies trying to murder Trixie on screen. <laughs> <laughs> she let it build up. She let it keep going. This is why explosive release of anger results in, um, I'm going to be a little political, uh, random shooting number 12. <laughs> yeah, both already. Didn't let it out. Didn't deal with it didn't find a compromise between themselves and everyone else, and their only co their only course recourse was an eventual detonation. Yeah. Sometimes those detonations are small. You screamed at your kids. You're not feel guilty about screaming at your kids, because let's face it, the kid doesn't understand why you're really mad. Yeah. By the way, screaming and yelling, this is a note, never actually works. It is defeating the purpose, 
of trying to communicate, and it is literally, you just need to go like express your anger in another way that is not directed at someone else. Because you're gonna feel guilty about screaming. You're gonna do something else, and you're never gonna undo that guilt for a time being, and you're going to permanently damage your relationship. Here, what Starlight should do is go, Trixie, I'm really upset at you. Can we like have 10 minutes? And she shouldn't be afraid of the repercussions of what has happened. Because if her friends really are her friends, then the table missing, they'll be more oriented with finding it instead of panicking and accusing them because it's lost. Think about it. If you are at work, and you come back to a pallet, and that pallet has, I don't know, soda that's missing. Are you going to be in more trouble if it's later found out that that soda is missing and they got sold to a customer than if you walk up to your boss right now and go, I don't know what happened, but there's like, we're missing a case of soda? Which one is going to result in more trouble later and more stress later, and which one's going to result in more mutual respect between you and your boss? A is going to carry you a new one. Own up to whatever mistake you make. The sooner you own up, the sooner you agree that there's a problem and give a solution to fix it the less likely you have this instance. Speaking of feeling guilty over something, uh, who here's ever felt depressed? Never. Hmm? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Depression and I are old friends. <laughs> Spike is not a physical creature in this case. Spike is a sounding board. The sounding board is your own head. What if she doesn't like this? Well, if she doesn't like this, then she's going to reject me. If she rejects me, then I'm going to go up in my room and cry. What if, it just keeps repeating. There's no breaking. There's no getting out of it. You're stuck in it. The mind works on negative emotion by constantly focusing on it. When you don't have another outlet, something else to do, you just get stuck there. This is why depression happens. This is why most creative people are depressed. Yes. Uh, thought follows feeling, feeling follows thought. Yes. Mm -hmm. Feeling follows thought, feeling follows feeling, follows thought, follows feeling, and it's just a repeating number. Humans are static. We're very, very static in how we do things and what we do. Because of this, unless something outside of us changes the equation, we stay in a circle. It's how all of our emotions work. When you're really in love with someone, when you're really going all out for them, you constantly do better for each other. When you're mad at each other, you start doing things to spite the other one. When one of you is depressed and the other one's not intervening, you just get more depressed. Yes? So, sorry, but you're going to make a point about that's why creative people kind of be depressed. Yes. Uh, so creative people are often depressed because the creation of something is how they break their cycle. But the problem is they have to get into that cycle to create. So what ends up happening is depression activates, they get into a work mode and go work on something for hours or days at a time. When that thing is finished and someone else gives them praise, they break the repressive, the depressive cycle temporarily. And until that person gets depressed again, they just kind of, this is why a lot of the times, particularly when people who get radically famous suddenly change, it's because they can't get depressed again because they can't drop back into the thing that was making them depressed, and it makes it harder for them to create something out of that depression to force their way out. So what do they do? They get crazy. <coughs> <laughs> Is that why uh, creative people who are not quite yet famous or getting up there are often considered workaholics? Yes! Hi! I'm a workaholic! <laughs> My name's Fiora. I probably put in a 70-hour work week schedule. Mm. Yeah. 
because I always feel like I have to do better, because I always feel like I have to do more, because I always feel like I have to go further. So what ends up happening? I end up doing stuff like this. This panel is a 116-page research paper that I have condensed into an hour and a half of me talking. Wow. <laughs> Every one of my panels is between 40 and 100 plus research paper. The thing is condensed down into something that you guys can understand. Mm -hmm. Because if I sat here and talked about Foucault and Nietzsche and LeBlanche for the next hour and a half, you'd all look at me like... <laughs> Just to clarify, it is entirely possible to be creative without depression. Just some people, that's their, their, their normal way of doing it, they should learn how to be a better way. It is entirely possible to be creative without depression. This is what is referred to as the um, euphoria creation. That is to say, you are happy, so you create. You create more to increase happiness, to share your feelings with others. And this is why some creatives are super happy all the time. They're trying to push that happy state they have onto others to increase their own happiness. Mm -hmm. Because they've hit a state at which they can't do it on their own anymore, and they have to express themselves in a way to push it to someone else to cause a recursive cycle between them and the other person. Right. Example, Pinkie Pie. Example, Pinkie Pie. <laughs> Strangely enough, Pinkie kind of classifies as both types. <laughs> All right, listen up. I have a whole lot to cover. There won't be a lot of pictures with the next slides, and I will try to keep the jokes to a minimum, no promises. <laughs> but we're going to start getting into some nitty gritty. <clears throat> Who here fears rejection? Why do we fear rejection? It hurts. Because it hurts. <laughs> However, who here physically has the capability to just look at someone and go, no, for no other reason than you don't want to? Silver or. <laughs> 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 the point being, we naturally are in a state of acceptance. Okay, I don't know where my mouse cursor went, so we're going to do this again. Mouse cursor, there you are. Princess, leave me be Twilight Sparkle. Princess. Best friend. Sorry, it hasn't worked yes. out how we wanted. But you have to believe me when I tell you that Nightmare Night is one of the most popular celebrations we have. Yes, I can tell by all the adoring shrieks of the children as they run away. <laughs> she's tried her best. She feels like she's been rejected. Yeah. This is where you end up. The fact of the matter is, though, we as human beings need to figure out how rejection works for ourselves. We think, what if they reject us, and then don't do anything about it. But successful people are still just as scared as that of that as unsuccessful people. Difference being, the successful person makes it incredibly easy or in the best interest of the person they are proposing something to, to say yes. You want to go on a date? You want to date somebody? You go work out. You rehone your body. You shower. You make yourself look better. You get that person's attention or you get someone else's attention that becomes interested in you. You improve yourself to reach out to someone else to form a connection because in order to gain the attention of that person, you must improve your own self. You gain self-worth. With your boss, you want to execute plan B because plan B will set up X, Y, and Z for the rest of the company and make more profit. But you can't leave with that. You have to explain how that goes. By explaining all of it and getting all the details, instead of just getting generalizations, your boss suddenly realizes, no, you've planned this out, you know what you're doing, I am more inclined to say yes. Yes, sir. Um, <laughs> I apologize. Uh, uh, um, uh, about, oh, about the, the you know, improving your body or whatever to make the date like you or something like that. Uh, I have to throw in a note about finding the right person who's actually going to like you and not just the, you know... So we're getting good. Stuff. Okay, good. <laughs> Problem. We're getting to talk. We're going to talk about love later. But the point here being, we as humans are naturally in a state in which we want to say yes because we know what rejection feels like, and we don't want someone else to experience that. However, we cannot say yes usually because we have an issue. If, however, the person is prepared for that issue and has prepared themselves, they become the successful individual because while they fear the same rejection. They have gone through the necessary steps and work, because it is work, 
to create a situation in which saying yes is significantly more appealing or advantageous than saying no.